I'm going to create an alignment with DTM map using the IPs. I type in the coordinates into the grid and then I select calc, curve design by IP and I select each one of the IPs in turn. Right click to drop the cursor and then going to each IP in turn I can enter the radius and the spiral length in and the spiral length out. If I press the calculate button it'll just check that for me. Similarly with the next now I now save it and I get a choice of just saving the IPs or the alignment string. I want to save that as an alignment and I'll call it northbound 2. Now we can go back to NRGWIN where we can open up the file in the rail design northbound 2 and we can see that it's mathematized the tangent points on that alignment. Using the horizontal alignment created by DTM map I can then enter a vertical alignment associated with it. This consists of changes at each tangent point along the vertical alignment with its level and the radius of the following segment. I can then enter cants. Again we simply enter wherever there's a change in cant. So on straight track there'll be zero cant. On full curve there'll be the full cant. Now I want to create a shape that will represent the profile of the tunnel. I enter the, a point that is on the shape. This is the very bottom invert of the shape. And I give it the radius and then a cumulative distance around that shape. So that, that brings me back to the start and we can see we've got a, a circle. Now I want to apply cant to this shape so it moves about with the cants of the tracks. And I can save this as a name but as you can see I've already saved some. One other thing we need to do is check that the vertical alignment sits at the right point of the tracks and very common for railway lines we use the low rail. When I want to compare surveyed points to the tunnel profile I load them up in cross sections. Here I'm going to import an ASCII file. This is a simple CSV file with Eastings, Northings and Levels in. I set each column for the data that's going to be in the column by right clicking on the header and choosing the appropriate column. I can then select a group of points from that file or I could simply select import all. I call up an alignment that we created earlier and I give this file a name. This is a section file of those observed points and I have to give it a layer name which I'm calling as built. Now I can load up at the same time any number of shape files that go with it. It's important to get a sweep distance correct that will gather each point at each section sufficiently. Now these points have been observed with a target and the offset of the target is 150 millimeters. So I'm going to shift these and I'm going to shift them normal to shape by 0.15. Now it needs to know which shape I want to do it to, so I'm going to shift them normal to the design. And now it's shifted those all 0.15. Now to do the wriggle report, I need to enter tunnel mode with this tunnel button here. And that's computed the best fit circle based on the observed points. It's also done a best fit to the structure gauge. and move the structure gauge suitably. We can choose which of these lines to draw. And to print it, I select the print option and I can choose what results to put onto the report. 
from my list of results here. I can also select what items I want in the columns about each survey point. We can change headers and footers and add other notes onto the report at the same time. We have two basic types of report for the tunnel rigel. One is a best fit circle, which we're using here, but there's also best fit points that uses a different type of algorithm. They both use least squares, but the best fit points accommodates shapes that are not circles. And then of course we can print any of these sections